Hey guys, it's Jeff and today we're checking out 10 settings that you should all be changing if you are running iOS 13 on your iDevice. So let's go ahead and check out these 10 settings that you should definitely change that will make your experience on iOS 13 a lot better. This video is sponsored by CyberGhost VPN, and unlike other VPN services out there, CyberGhost doesn't spy on your internet usage or collect and sell your data. What they also do is provide you the fastest VPN service possible each time you connect, but you also have a really cool option where you can select from streaming servers dedicated to individual streaming services like Hulu, HBO, Amazon, Netflix, YouTube Red, you get the idea. So go check out CyberGhost VPN in the video description below. They can support your iPhone, Mac, PC, and Android devices all for just $2.75 a month. Okay guys, so we have our iPhone here and feel free to uh, kind of follow along if you want to go ahead and change these settings as well. So the first setting we are going to change is the optimized battery charging setting. Of course, we're going to go into the settings app and then go ahead and go all the way down to the battery menu here. And once you're inside the battery menu and it has loaded, go ahead and go to battery health. Now on the bottom here, we have a brand new setting called Optimize Battery Charging. And basically, um, to in an effort to reduce battery aging, the iPhone basically learns when you need the battery most and goes ahead and during the nighttime does not charge it um, up to 100% until you actually need it. So uh, you'll get a notification when this happens and it actually will improve battery health in the long run. So go ahead, turn that on. I always recommend it just because that will save on your battery health and it will only do this during the nighttime, so you're not really going to be missing out on any battery life whatsoever. Now, the next setting you are able to change is dark mode. So let's go ahead and go all the way down to display and brightness. And in the display and brightness menu, you have the option to change your UI experience from light to dark. So you have this beautiful dark theme that really saves a lot of battery life for those of you with OLED devices, and it also looks very, very cool. Now, below the light and dark theme settings, you also have more settings. So you have the option to turn automatic light versus dark switching on or off. So the automatic setting will actually give you an option to select when you want this light and dark theme to activate throughout the day. So you can select sunset to sunrise, that being at sunset, uh, you have the light theme activating and then, um, or the dark theme activating, and then at sunrise, you have the light theme. You can also set a custom schedule here to uh, kind of select the times that you want the light and dark themes to activate. So go ahead, configure settings as to how you like it, and then that will be kind of the configuration that goes on moving forward. Now, the next setting is the App Store download limit, and to go ahead and basically erase all of the download limits for the App Store, or kind of set your own, go down to the App Store and iTunes menu here. Now, go halfway down to App Downloads, and uh, currently the setting is ask if over 200 megabytes, but if you don't want um, that setting to be enabled, you can go ahead and select ask first, so it will always ask you if you want to go over a certain limit for cellular data, and then also you can select always allow, and it will not actually ask you, it will just download whatever you want um, for whatever uh, kind of size the download is. So go ahead, configure settings. I know a lot of people were asking for a higher limit for app downloads, and now you have it. Now, the next setting is screen time communication limits, and the screen time configuration has definitely changed. So to go ahead, check this out, go a little bit down in the uh, settings app here, and then go on to screen time. And in the middle here, you will see a brand new menu called communication limits. Basically, this sets limits based upon your contacts during downtime. So you have two options here allowed communication uh, during allowed screen time and then during downtime. So during allowed screen time, it would be uh, kind of good to have this set to everyone so you don't have any blocked contacts here. Uh, but in the during downtime, you can select for yourself or for your kids uh, what contacts are allowed to contact uh, this device during downtime. So you can select everyone, of course, but you can select specific contacts during downtime and you can add those contacts down below. The next setting on our list is the option to silence unknown callers. And to access this feature, go all the way down to the phone menu here in the settings app. 
and then go down to silence unknown callers. Basically, iOS 13 has a feature in the near future that will kind of uh, block out unknown callers and known spam numbers. But for now, you have the option to silence unknown callers. So any unknown callers will not actually activate your ringer. It will all be silent. So the next setting is Siri voice feedback, and this will be found within the accessibility menu. So go into accessibility, and then we are going to go all the way down to the Siri menu here. Now within the Siri menu, you can go ahead and activate type to Siri, which is always an option, but the voice feedback is what we are here for. So the voice feedback can be controlled with different settings here. It could be always on, which is the default setting, or you can select control with ring switch. So if you have the ringer set to off, the voice feedback will not be on. It will only be text, which is actually really nice because if you are in a quiet environment and you don't want uh, your assistant to be talking back at you, that is great to have just controllable through the ringer. So you have a control with ring switch and then also you have a third setting here hands-free only, uh, which will basically be hands-free only and only provide feedback when you are using Hey Siri or when connected to a Bluetooth device, headphones, or CarPlay. So go ahead, select what you want. I personally leave it always on just because I never have problem problems with activating Siri, but if you have any issues or concerns um, with activating it and you don't always want that feedback, go ahead and select the control with ring switch. Now, the next setting is actually one that I always recommend. It's called background app refresh. And uh, to go and activate that, go on to general and then background app refresh. And here you can actually control all of the apps that have background app refresh on. And they have an awesome setting here where you can control background app refresh and only have it uh, basically on when it's on Wi-Fi. So if you have a lot of cellular data and you don't really care if background app refresh uses that cellular data, you can turn it on with Wi-Fi and cellular data. But if you don't have a lot, I do recommend that you select only the Wi-Fi setting. Now, if you wanna save the most battery life possible and you don't want background app refresh on at all, you can go ahead and select it off. Now also within this menu, you can go ahead and select um, all of the apps individually. So you don't actually have to um, kind of select all of them at once. You can go ahead and select which ones have background app refresh on based upon your preferences. So the ninth setting that we can change is the wallpaper. And within iOS 13, we got a lot of new wallpapers. So to go ahead and check them out, go down to the wallpaper menu. And here within the first menu, we actually have an extra setting that you can go ahead and change. Change. If you have dark mode on, the dark appearance dims wallpaper selection can be turned on. That will basically dim the wallpaper in the background and uh, that will only be on when dark mode is enabled. I personally have this set to off because I think that dark mode is dark enough and I don't need my wallpaper to be dimmed. Now let's go on to choose a new wallpaper and within the stills menu here, we actually have four new wallpapers for the iPhone. And uh, basically all of these wallpapers are designed specifically around iOS 13. So go ahead, check them out. There's these awesome, beautiful wallpapers here and you can go ahead and select them and they also have a variant of them that will activate with dark mode. So if we go ahead and activate dark mode with our current wallpaper, let's go into the control center here, activate dark mode. You can see that we actually have two wallpapers and one. This is the dark theme wallpaper for the wallpaper we were using before. So you can go ahead and select your wallpaper and change it up with dark mode as well. Now, the last and final setting for iOS 13 that you should definitely be changing is the find my offline finding. And to go ahead and see this setting, go into your iCloud menu here, go to find my, and definitely make sure that find my iPhone is activated. Now also within this menu, you have uh, the ability to enable offline finding and offline finding enables your devices to be found when not connected to Wi-Fi or cellular. It will do this by connecting to other iPhones and other Apple devices around it 
via Bluetooth. So definitely have that uh, kind of uh, turned on if you want your iDevices, if they're lost or stolen, to be found when the connection for Wi-Fi or cellular is severed. Now also, just as a bonus, I do recommend uh, having send last location turned on just in case your phone is lost or stolen. And then also within this menu, you can go ahead and share your location with friends and family in the messages and find my apps. Go ahead and turn this on based upon your discretion. So guys, that was our video on the 10 settings that you should definitely be changing within iOS 13. And let us know if that kind of makes your experience better on iOS 13, I'd love to know. Of course, if you have any recommendations for any settings that should be changed within iOS 13, definitely leave a comment down below for others to check those out in the near future. Anyways, guys, thank you for watching this video on the 10 settings you should be changing within iOS 13. If you want to see more content like this, definitely get subscribed and also hit the bell button to get updates as soon as any of that content is released. We'll definitely be following up with all of the iOS 13 betas and giving you guys the latest scoop on what's new and what changes have been made. So again, thank you guys for watching this video and hopefully I'll be seeing you in some upcoming content. I hope you all have an awesome day. Peace.